Microsoft Designer is out of preview and available for anyone with a Microsoft account to use. They've packed it with AI tools to create custom photos and avatars, along with design templates that you can create in under five minutes, which competes directly with Canva. In this video, I'm going to do a complete tutorial showing you how to create avatars, social media content, coloring book pages, and more. Stay tuned because later on in the video, I'll give my assessment on how Microsoft Designer compares to Canva. So let's get started. First, navigate to designer.microsoft.com. You'll be asked to sign in with a Microsoft account. If you don't have one, you can use this opportunity to create one. After logging in, you're presented with three main sections. The first one is create with AI. This gives you the ability to create images just like in Midjourney or Dali, but you can also do invitations, social media posts, which I'll show you in a moment, and even create custom emojis. The Edit with AI section provides you with editing tools, such as a background remover, object eraser, just to name a few. And Design from Scratch provides more flexibility to build something from scratch. Given it's a Microsoft product, there's a heavy emphasis on promoting their own platforms like Word or PowerPoint, but you can ignore all of that and head down to other designs to build them yourself. Let's move forward with creating custom images. It'll open up in a new window. You have the ability to change the size. So if you wanted to make a portrait or a wide shot, you can do that before you start generating. There's a number of examples on the page that give different prompts that you can use and try out. I'm gonna do something completely different. This is a prompt that I got from Midjourney's website. Credit goes to Pajeski. We're gonna see how Microsoft Designer creates the image. Typically, Microsoft uses Dolly 3 in order to create images, so I'm curious to see how it does with this prompt. Simply click Generate. Once the image generation finishes, you get four different examples that you can choose from. Not quite as lifelike as the one from Midjourney, but typically with Dolly 3, it adds a little bit more of a cartoonish flair to images, but overall it's great. If you like them, you can download them, and if you wanted to use this image and start editing, what you would do is you would click the edit button, it would open it up in a new window, and then you have a number of tools that are available to you. So you can add several filters, you can adjust the color gamut, you can erase certain objects. For erasing, what'll happen is Designer will start highlighting different parts. So let's see if we can go ahead and remove this champagne bottle. I'm gonna click on it and then click erase object. And here's the final result. So it's completely gone. Although if you highlight it, you can still see the outline. But if I let go, you can see the image is completely gone. And then if I like it, I can click on looks good to confirm it. And that'll be the final image. And then you have the ability to remove the background. So all you have to do is just simply click on it. And if you make a mistake, there's an undo button at the top. So if I click on that, it'll immediately go back to what it was before. Let's see how the blur background works. Okay, so it has the main object as the focal point and everything is blurred in the background. Some of the turntables on the right are being blurred within the image as well. So not 100% perfect, but for something that you get completely for free, this is very useful. Heading back to the main page, let's go ahead and create a greeting card. You can start with a description, but you don't necessarily need it. Just like Canva, there's a number of templates that Designer has available that you can use and start customizing. So I'll show you both options. I'm going to ask Designer to create a 10-year work anniversary card for a colleague named Mark. Click Generate. This is interesting. I got an error back, so it says something is wrong on our end. Please try again later. Let me go ahead and make another attempt to generate this greeting card. Same thing keeps happening, so what I'll do is I'll move on to just editing an existing one. All you have to do is select to try. And when you're selecting a template, Designer will update the information. So if you wanted to just quickly swap out the person's name, so let's say we'll do happy 38th and we'll just use Mark again. Much like the image generation, you get a few different examples. I'm noticing right off the bat, there's some extra P's in the happy. So this is where something like Midjourney has a distinct advantage. It does lettering and it does spelling very well. Whereas Dolly 3, sometimes it's hit or miss. You can see in the middle, the happy at the top is spelled correctly, but the birthday is a little bit jumbled. You could of course go ahead and regenerate this, but for the example, I'm just gonna click on the one that's the best out of them all.
Clicking on it gives a digital version of the card, and this is something that you could send. And then by downloading it, it becomes a still image. This could be attached to an email, this could be attached to a text message or sending somebody a message on WhatsApp. Designing social media posts is a little bit different. Yes, you can start by creating a prompt. You can also add in existing images, and then in addition to that, change the format. So let's say we wanted to create something for Instagram. So I wanna create an Instagram story about the launch of a new protein powder and if you want to add an image, you can tap into images from your phone, from different online storage services. You can just simply browse and upload files. And if you had other media that was saved to OneDrive, because Microsoft products are talking to each other, you can also import those. I'm going to import a stock image that I got from Pexels. So here's four examples that I've been provided with. So it takes the image that I uploaded, creates four distinct different styles with different text. I'm gonna go with this one. Now I could download it right away, but I actually wanna edit it. You're brought back into Designer, and if you notice any area of this image can be customized. So if I didn't like the image and I wanted to re-upload something else, I could do that. By clicking on the text, I'm immediately presented with a number of different font options that I can change. You can also upload your own fonts if you prefer that. So as soon as I click on it, it automatically adjusts. Same thing with design elements. I can change the color. I can reverse them around if I wish. Any aspect can be updated. If I wasn't into the template that was initially recommended by Designer, you have a number of different template options on the left-hand side. And if I wanted to search for some specifically, let's see if there's fitness ones. So right off the bat, we have a number of different fitness options that I can swap in. There is a weird quirk where if I click on the template, it doesn't automatically add it to the page right away. So these are just weird quirks. Microsoft is updating things all the time. So just keep that in mind as you're continuing to use this platform. There were additional visuals that I wanted to add. Clicking on visuals gives me a couple of options. I could generate elements using a prompt. I could use photos and search for photos, photo elements to add in, graphics, and even short videos. And what's good about Designer is if you had a specific aesthetic of colors that you wanted to use, you can go ahead and create a brand kit. When you create something brand new in Designer, you can then apply all of the colors, all of the design elements that are associated with your brand in a few clicks. Coloring book pages are extremely easy to do. While for now, you can't upload your own image and convert it into a coloring book page. You can still generate them from a prompt. You could still select any size that you wish. And then they have existing templates that you can use. So if I click on one, much like the invitation, you can change elements of it. So let's go ahead and see if we can update this robot to be something else. So I've completely changed some of the attributes to be focused on a cute dog rather than a robot. Let's see how Designer handles this. So this is not bad, a little bit more simplistic than I was thinking about. And on some of the image generations, it looks as though they're even adding in additional elements that weren't required. Let's go ahead and edit it and see how this can be edited. Much in the same way of the image generation, you can select all of the different filters, and then you can erase things and play around with it, add different visuals and media. Designer is also recommending some other options on the right-hand side, some new ways of interpreting coloring book page. I'm curious about how custom emojis are generated. I'm gonna make this a little bit more difficult. I wanna see if it can actually create an emoji of a Roman gladiator bouncing a basketball. All right, here we go. Not bad, not bad at all. So what's nice is you can download the image straight to your computer, but if you wanna send it to your phone, you can send it to your phone. What you're asked to do is you're asked to then scan a QR code. And by doing so, you're given the option to share or to download it. And then this is what it looks like once you send it to somebody. So not quite an emoji. It's more or less a big picture, but it's a neat thing that you can do with between friends. Under edit with AI, I've already shown you editing images. I've shown you removing backgrounds. Let's see what restyling an image looks like. Restyling images does allow you to upload photos. I've uploaded a photo of myself. When you click on style, you have a number of different options that you can select. So I'm gonna go with pixel art. For background elements, you can add additional elements to the image that you want it to incorporate. So I'm gonna leave it blank, but if you wanted to add in other things, that's definitely something that designer allows. It doesn't quite look like me, but it does a very cool job making adjustments. Let's see if a different art style will get closer to what I look like. So this one looks very cool. I love the pop art aesthetic. It's just, it still doesn't really look like me though, but it's very, very cool in terms of what it can do. And much like all of the other things I've shown you, if you wanted to download it, you can. You can go in and edit it and customize any of the elements. 
Framing an image is self-explanatory. Simply upload an image. You can also add elements. You can put a frame around different styles. You've got some templates to work with, or you can select one from one of the existing templates. Designing something from scratch gives you the flexibility to customize all of the elements. If I wanted to create an X post, clicking on it, it gives me the exact dimensions that I would need. I can start using templates, or I can jump in and add different visuals, different text, and different media to my X post. How does Designer compare to Canva? This is the free version of Canva. Much like a designer, you have a lot of different options that you can select from. You can start by creating a document. You have a social media option where you can create different posts for different platforms, generate videos. I find Canva has a lot more selection and it's a lot more robust, but then it's also a much more mature platform. For example, Canva can do actual video. So if you wanted to create an Instagram reel or a TikTok video, they have a number of templates that you can use that are completely customizable. This is something that Canva offers completely for free. Canva has all of the same tools such as adding in elements, adding in text, creating a brand kit, uploading your own images. And the unique thing about Canva is it partners with a lot of different third-party services. You can use Dolly image generation. You can use your own custom avatars from HeyGen. You can use those other subscriptions, tap into what it is that you're trying to create in Canva and bridge all of those platforms together. And with a paid account, Canva has all of the same things that Designer has. You can do magic expand, you can erase things, you can remove the background, you can animate text. All of these things are available to use. For me, the slight edge still goes to Canva, although I really love what Microsoft Designer is doing, and especially something that you get completely for free. It's a really good tool to have, and I love the competition that it's bringing to Canva because it'll only improve over time. If you got value out of this video, consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. And if you're looking for more on AI tools, I have content popping up that you can click on right here.